uh, that's, that's where we'll see the result come out. And at night time, the uh, projections that happen outside, we've actually filmed not inside the cave, but around the environment where this cave exists. And um, I was, I'd like to um, start some dialogue with ACDC to actually uh, talk about their families uh, leaving their little photograph inside and being part of the art project. Now these pieces here are, are a result of uh, many different discussions. We have this club, a club called the Monday Club. Um, it's something, it's a man club, an excuse to get away and have a break. And the whole idea of this club is like going back to art school. Because I've left art school, there's a whole of us who get together and bring an album, a six pack, and an interesting book. And basically what we do is we have these art discussions and we have the little um, basically DJ set going and we invite different artists and Monday. Because the reason why we do it on Monday is everybody hates Mondays. And so we're only supposed to be doing it for two hours and sometimes these discussions and uh, we're discussing about the beer, the quality of the book, all this sort of carry that goes on to about two o'clock. And my wife came very, very concerned that these clubs were becoming very popular. So we had to slow it down. So, all the pieces that, um, that you're seeing here are part of the result of the Monday Club. Um, they're a result of um, some of my um, responses in India when I took a hold of flattened corned beef tins of the landscape. So when you go to the supermarket and you're looking along, you'll see this brand called uh, Pacific Corn Beef. And on the, there's a, a nice landscape. And what I was doing was actually repatriating the landscape because there's these beautifully formed animals that was uh, standing perfectly and what I wanted to do is actually repatriate that landscape in the background and see how much this animal would actually um, basically impact it on the environment. And then the whole dialogue started from there. So when I had my exhibition coming back from India, uh, that's when the whole thing started to roll out. And then Mr. Cookie or Captain James Cook, uh, that dialogue started and then looking at Samoa, how much it, it affected there. And then going to Richard's, uh, um, uh, having it with that model up in Brisbane, seeing how much these animals had an uh, impact on this, uh, in the environment. So my piece, as far as the relationship with the bull, is a universal one, but it's talking about an environmental problem. Because uh, I was brought up in stock by uh, my uncle uh, is a bull breeder, and his uncle, she's got the name uh, Pete Cowley. And he's Australian. Uh, we were brought up in Taranaki, which is on the west side of uh, Aotearoa. So I'm very familiar with this form. So every summer, um, our parents would get rid of us because there's five boys in our family. And, uh, and we were only born a year apart. And our parents would get put up, one of us would get on the bus. We had to travel separately because you know what it's like when you're in a tight space when you're touching each other as kids. The tension, uh, the tension gets really interesting. So my dialogue, the environment, and actually the animals, and some of, some of these pieces I actually were interested in the human aspect of what they were responding. I was actually more interested in what their stock responded. So I parked these balls up in the um, on the dairy farm and just filmed them. I did the piece up in New Caledonia where I did the same thing again, where I was trying to look at the responses of a, a shape and a form. And uh, we filmed this, uh, as soon as they went to the uh, milking shed, we filmed all these cows walking slowly past and see how they react to this form, this big giant corn beef barbecue mechanical ball. And the whole idea of actually building these balls and building up all these dance groups and creating tension was I was getting sick and tired of these environments, these, uh, these environments here where I felt the art need to go back up the street and create that dialogue when everyone was finishing work at 4.30 on the bus, going back on the train. So what we were doing was actually trying to create a little bit of chaos, but a bit of interesting discussion before you got home about what we're talking about this form. So the whole thing is just an ongoing process. And this is only just one of the little projects that I work on at the moment, so we were just on the end of it. But um, when, we, when I found out about this cave and we were doing more research, like I was saying before, it just seems to get darker and darker and darker. And I'd like to think I could actually build up a relationship with the Tarawa people to actually respond to what's going on here. 
And actually, when we did the first content project uh, for the festival, we were looking at James, James Cook uh, as contact, who had a colleague of ours who's actually same, from the same one I was talking here, uh, to play, who was a translator, navigator, and he took the very first picture of watercolour, a photograph alongside Parkinson, just started at the, right at the Botany Bay. So these people I'm using to actually start the dialogue on our first content, our first experience. When I'm talking about our, I'm talking about from an indigenous point of view and then responding from that point of view. Because for me, we've always received the information this way from a Western perspective, but I feel it's actually our turn. And when I say our turn, I'm talking about from an indigenous point of view. And if I'm using this language, um, I'm not going to apologize but there's a different view in actually how we see things. And I do have a huge rapport for the Black Goddess here. There's actually a lot of interesting dialogue, but the art piece for me has actually been part of this whole project that you guys have actually started. And I feel the art piece was actually done during the week and yesterday and the day, uh, day before, especially when, um, when we were in town. I couldn't wait to come back to Camden Town, be part of the art process and uh, process um, sharing dialogue, and I think it's a nice way, and we call it a wanana, where there's a school of learning, where you're sharing dialogue. And it's nice to walk around the gallery where we can actually share ideas and not hide any of the concepts. And the, the, the interesting discussion was, it was an awesome um, privilege to actually meet Emery, Richard, and all the other uh, colleagues and uh, Glenn. So it gives me a wide perspective, and then for me, that is the art piece. And it was actually enjoyable enough. I'm so humbled actually to be part of this project. Thank you very much, Pedro, and Lisa, and the Tarawa people. Thank you. Ooh, thanks, Michael. Uh, are there any questions? You're here. Thank you, Michael. I just wanted to ask you about the projections. Yep. So, what's the difference between the 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 projection that you have here and the projection that you give for first night for Sydney Festival? Is it the same thing? It's a similar concept, and basically we're using uh, moving image from uh, from the archives. And actually, what when we were playing these images uh, in front of the Kukana community, a lot of these films are actually were filmed of us in our you know in a when uh, we were getting our constitution in the Cook Islands, and a lot of these films had not been shown. And so what I've been trying to do is repatriate a lot of the still images, uh, moving images, and I'm more interested in what the mamas and the papas and the young ones have to say about these images that they've never seen before. What did you think? It was actually really interesting how much the costumes had changed, how much the dance had changed, and where the dances actually came from. And what I was more interested in, like how we related to that person there, and how the environment had actually changed in the background. But the best part of it is that emotional, um, with the music that we had on First Contact, that was the best part, because we were able to sing along and experience it and share it with everyone, which, which was the main thing. What saddens me is like, and I like to see the um, archives, and it was a privilege with the Australian archives that they were able to let us access these films so we could bring it out to the community. Because I think that's a great dialogue, but using music and uh, spoken word and audio and images and different effects just creates dialogue and uh, gossip. And I'm uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to let the mic go very soon. And that's what I thought was really uh, wonderful about the first, uh, the first night uh, opening of the Sydney Festival is that because you know, a lot of those archives are all stored deep in the basement of some you know, institution that never see the light of day. And what we were able to do is to bring it out of the basement and, and you know, project it in a large building and making it accessible to people. So I thought that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Thank you, Michael. Thank you.